and welcome to the session. This is Professor Farhad. In this session, we would look at a limited assurance engagement related to historical financial statement other than audit. So it's 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 an assurance engagement. It's limited, but it's not audit. Okay, and this is part of other assurance services other than audit. So here we're going to look at a few engagement that they are considered assurance, limited assurance engagement, but they are not audit. Okay. So we have certain types of audit and attestation services that fall within the auditing standard. So we are working within the auditing standard, but not audit of historical financial statement in accordance with GAAP or IFRS. So those could be audit of financial statements prepared on, compre on other comprehensive basis other than GAAP and IFRS, UGBOA. It could be audit of specified elements, account or item, basically audit one account, one item, one element, or it could be debt compliance letter. So basically, they want us to issue a letter stating that the uh, the uh, the borrower is complying with the debt. So let's take a look at all those three topics one by one. The first one is other comprehensive basis of accounting. So auditor often audit statement prepared on basis other than GAAP and IFRS. And this is true in the real world. As I always mention, when I was in practice, I worked with a medium CPA firm, medium-sized CPA firm, not a big one. So medium-sized CPA firm dealed with small and medium business. We don't we, we don't deal with Walmart. We don't deal with Microsoft. We don't deal with uh, the Amazons of the world. We deal with mom and pop stores, small companies in your area. So those small companies, they may not be following GAAP. They might they may want their financial statements issue on basis other than GAAP, but obviously they don't want IFRS. I mean, I live in the U.S., therefore we don't even use IFRS for even for even large companies okay so what are the bases that we can use other than gap and ifrs we could use cash or modified cash basis and i always mention we for, when i use when i was in practice my cba firm had a lot of physicians doctors so we did a lot of financial statements for doctors not a lot for attorneys our competitors dealt with attorneys we dealt with physicians and doctors so that's one basis, cash basis. And basically, what's the cash basis? We're auditing the financial statements based on based on cash receipts and cash uh, cash paid. And remember, under cash, cash certain transaction cannot be cash, such as when they buy a physical a, a property, plant, and equipment. What we have to do, we have maybe to uh, have depreciation. But cash or modified cash basis are basically the same thing. Another basis, basis used to comply with requirement of regulatory agency. That's if you are auditing a utility company or insurance company. I never dealt with this, but they follow spe specific rules because they are heavily regulated. Income tax basis, I did a lot of those because small businesses, what they do, they want to keep, only keep one set of books, and that's tax basis. So what you do when, if they do an audit, they want the audit to be done under the tax basis. When they issue their, fi their financial statements, they want to use the tax basis. They, they don't want to deal with any basis other than taxes, okay? Or it could be a definite sets of cr criteria having substantial support such as a price level basis of accounting. And we, we, really, we don't use this in the US because we have no inflation, okay? But those are basis other than GAAP and IFRS that you could do the audit. So when you do the audit, auditor usually do these audits in the same way as the client follow GAAP and IFRS. Of course, you have to understand the accounting basis, but the steps are the same, steps are the same. So when the client follow a comprehensive basis other than GAAP or IFRS, the auditor must, must make sure cle to clearly indicate that they are prepared using the other basis. And the best way to show this in the report. So in the report, you have to clearly state that you are doing an audit and it's not following GAAP. So we have audited the financial statements of Triangle Partnership, income tax basis, okay? which compromise statement of assets, liabilities, and capital income tax basis. Notice here we we said on income tax basis. Management responsibility is the same as the regular report, but the responsibility is the same as the regular report. In our opinion, the financial statements re referred above present fairly in all material respect in accordance with the basis of accounting uses for income tax purposes as described in note x so again we have to make sure whoever reading this this is we're following the tax basis of accounting we're not following gap so note x we draw attention to the financial statement which describe the basis of accounting the financial statements are prepared on the basis of of accounting the partnership uses for income tax purposes so again we define what income tax purposes it's a basis of accounting other than accounting principle generally accepted in the US, our opinion is not modified with respect to this matter. That's all what it is. Okay. Now, also, we, we, we can be engaged to 
audit one account or one item. Auditor often asked to audit an issue report on specific aspects of financial statements. And yes, I did this. A common example, a very common example is a report on the audit of sales of retail store in a shopping center to be used for rental payment. Now, a lot of stores in, at the mall, which is the business for that business is going down. So you have the mall and you have various stores at the mall. And what happened, sometimes they might have an agreement. You pay, you know, $3,000 per month fixed plus 5% of your sales. So your rent is 3,000 plus 5% of your sales. Now the owner of the mall, what they do, they want someone to audit the sales of those shops because they want to make sure the sale is not, is not being understated because if they understate the sale, the mall will get less money. So that's what it is. And I did, um, I did those type of audit. Okay. So the audit of specified element account or item, much like an ordinary audit, except it's for a specific account, not the full financial statement, but you are still conducting an audit. So you do have a materiality. Materiality is defined in terms of the element account or item. So whatever the account you're auditing, if you're auditing sales, your materiality will be for the sales account. Now, remember, if you're auditing sales only, the materiality, it's going to be very small. It's going to be close to zero. If you're auditing sales, they don't want any mistakes. They want you to focus all your effort on that account. Therefore, you should not have any, the materiality should be very low. So you cannot tolerate any mistakes. Okay. Auditor must extend their audit efforts. For example, if you're auditing sales, guess what? What else is going to be affected? Account receivable. What else is going to be affected? Sales discount. What else is going to be affected? Sales returns. So those are accounts that are related to sales. What's, what accounts might be affected? Bad debt expense. So when you're auditing only sales, you might have to go into other account just by, by the nature of the beast because other accounts are interrelated. Inter just that's how it works in the real world. Also, another another service that uh, a CPA firm would do, other than historical financial statement audit, as clients occasionally enter into a loan agreement that require them to provide lenders with a report from a CPA firm about the existence or not existence of some condition. So you borrow money from the bank, and what the bank wants you to do is to give to get to go to a CPA and get a report saying that you are complying with the loan agreement because the bank doesn't want to study that information. They want an objective third party. And obviously CPA firms, they know how payment work, interest work, so on and so forth. So that's why they want you to do this. Okay. For example, a bank may require a company to maintain a, cer a certain dollar amount of working capital. What's working capital? Current asset minus current liability. Or they want you to retain a specific amount on your retained earnings or some other conditions. Okay. So what, you, what they want you to do um, they want they they want their client to maintain a certain working capital and to obtain an, an audit stating that they are complying with the working capital and we used to do this a lot where i used to work and i still remember a funeral home a funeral home in the scranton area scranton pennsylvania we always had to deal with this working capital current asset minus current liabilities and specifically under current liabilities this client wanted to move a lot of current liabilities move them into long-term liabilities why because they had a lot of that and when current liability goes down working capital goes up so they wanted to reclassify some of the current liabilities into long term why because they had they had a lot of loans with the bank and the bank put a lot of restriction on that client i dreaded that client i hated working on that account but it is what it is so a debt compliance letters and similar report Auditor may issue the report on debt compliance and similar engagement as a separate report or by adding a paragraph after the opinion paragraph. So you could issue a separate report or you can add a paragraph after the opinion. So you have two options. Okay. The auditor should provide a debt compliance letter only for client for whom the auditor has done the audit to the overall financial statement. And simply why? Because you want to be comfortable with your numbers. A debt compliance letter on a matter such as the existence of a current ratio of 2.5 or better would be difficult to accomplish without conducting a complete financial statement. So simply put, and this, this was the situation with this funeral home. They looked the bank, which is current ratio and working capital are the same and working capital are the same. Current ratio is current assets divided by current liabilities and working capital is current assets minus current liabilities. So so it doesn't matter how you look at it. It's basically, and to a degree, it's the same thing. Uh, this funeral home needed to maintain a certain current ratio, and they were close to it. They never went down below it, but they wanted the highest buffer zone ever. So we did not. We did not want to. We would not make a statement on the 
on, on the compliance if we did not do the audit because we cannot comment on someone else's work. Okay, that's what we're saying here. And remember, the auditor opinion, it's going to be negative assurance. What's negative assurance? We are not aware of any issues. We are not saying there is no issues. We are not aware. We are not aware. So we have to be very careful. Okay, and this is a re an example of a debt compliance report. We have audited the financial statement for this company. We put the date. In connection with our audit, nothing came to our attention that caused us to believe that the company failed to comply with the terms, covenant, provisions, or conditions of Section 1 uh, of this in the bond indenture or loan or whatever. Okay, this report is intended solely for the information and use of the board of directors and management of this company. So basically, we are restricting the report. Notice it's a negative, negative opinion, and the report is restricted the report is restricted okay pretty much we are done with the lectures of assurance services other than audit i might work an example or two just to illustrate the concepts that we learn other than that read the book um complete your homework complete your quiz and always if you're studying for your cpa exam study hard it's worth it